But I first want to establish that suffering is the bond of humanity. We all suffer. There isn't a person in this room, there isn't a person who's ever had a breath who hasn't suffered in some form. Whether it's physical pain, like what we're talking about, chronic pain, or emotional pain, or a combination of the two. We all suffer. We all come from that fabric, the fabric of suffering. And it starts, well, when does it start? It starts right here. Think of what we felt as we traveled down our mother's birth canal, getting squeezed ever so tightly, and then gasping for our first breath. Think of what we felt. And then we, we come out in this room that's cold. There are bright lights. There are people wearing masks. What, what is this? And noises we've never heard. We experience pain from the moment of birth. It's almost like a sign of things to come, isn't it? It's almost like a tap on the shoulder. Guess what? <laughs> it's only beginning. <laughs> I mean, it's very scary. When I was young, I was the joker of the family. I was a class clown. I was the life of the party but yet I had allowed pain to take that away from me. I was frustrated, bitter, angry, all of the above. But I allowed that to happen. And so I thought, well, wait a minute. Happiness truly is a choice. You see, I was a guy that was running around. I had a lot of baggage. <laughs> My feet weren't on the ground. I felt like, well, I felt like an ass once in a while. <laughs> Happy with pain. Boy, what in the world does he mean? How can people be happy with pain? Well, it doesn't mean we're happy we have it. But it means we're happy in spite of it. That we can be happy no matter what we're facing in life because happiness is truly a choice. And Lincoln once said, people are only as happy as they make up their minds to be. And look at Lincoln's life. Lincoln was born into poverty. He was, suffered from depression. His wife was declared insane. He only had one of his four children live to be an adult. So if Lincoln can be the beginning of hope for us to see that we can be happy no matter what we face, if he can be our beacon of light, then let's let it be. Okay, you may be wondering about this ladder over here. I'll test it out. Yes, it's a, we call it a visual aid in the business. A ladder allows us to, to reach a goal that we normally cannot reach while standing on our own two feet. And so what I'm going to present you today are five steps that will help us find happiness. So the first step that we're going to take on the ladder as we climb the ladder together, the first step is the technique of surrender. Surrender. Surrender means acceptance, that we accept our life. It's not that we are going to raise a white flag and we're going to quit or something like that. Surrender is acceptance. Surrender comes from the old French word, surrende, which means to give up something to another. Well, when we surrender, when we fully accept our lives as they are, we're literally giving ourselves our life back. I wrote a surrender oath a few years ago, and it says, I realize I will have pain and adversity in my life. Sometimes there are things, well, I have no control over. Today, right now, I accept my life as it is. I will do my best to be happy every day, no matter what. I call this next one thought management. <laughs> <laughs> Going to get a grip on our thoughts right now. And there are two principles of thought management. First is be aware of your moods. Be aware of your moods. And the second is to be aware of your thoughts. And I like to say that thought management leads to better pain management. Hey, within this room, we are all thought-making machines. We have 60,000 thoughts a day. That's about one a second. And what happens is, is that, well, we become loyal to our thinking. We become loyal to our thoughts. We think, well, I had this thought, so it must be accurate, it must be right, it must be perfect. Why? Because I made this thought. Well, it really doesn't work that way. All right, so right now, I'd like everybody to take a deep breath in their nose and out your mouth. Yes, we're going to talk about relaxation. I, I generically call it relaxation therapy. Of course, I'm talking about biofeedback, guided imagery, relaxation response, self-hypnosis, meditation. These are some great tools for the chronic pain patient. 
Well, I think everybody should practice a form of meditation every day because it's a gift that we have within us, inside of us, that we can utilize. And I'm going to remind you of the benefits because I'm sure you probably know a lot of that. Lowers the level of pain. That's quite an obvious one. 20 to 30 minutes of relaxation therapy can be equal to two to four, even six hours of sleep. So if you're an insomniac, boy, have I got something for you. It can change brain function. What do I mean by that? Well, there was a study at the University of Wisconsin-Madison published in the March 2005 National Geographic magazine. I get a lot of my information from National Geographic, kind of a funny place to get medical information. But they did a study, and they took people who had negative emotions, and they did a brain scan. And then they took people, well, they took some Tibetan monks who meditated on a regular basis. And they noticed a lot of activity on the people with negative emotions on this right prefrontal cortex. And it was funny because with the monks, they had a lot of activity on the left prefrontal cortex. Now, I'm not a neurologist. I know one sitting right there. But this is the happy side of the brain. Remember, we're trying to climb the ladder and be happy. So relaxation therapy is a wonderful and healthy tool to allow us to achieve happiness. Now, this next, I joke around a lot, but this next uh, rung on the ladder is, is something that I've spent a lot of time, many, many years, pondering this idea and thinking about the purpose of pain. Why do we suffer? Why do we hurt? Why, when we're born, are we introduced to pain immediately? And why can't we focus on the result of our pain versus our pain itself. Dr. Newell Dwight Hillis was a preacher about the turn of the century, about 1910, up in Brooklyn, New York, at the Pilgrim Church. And he says, whatever is universal must be beneficial. But wait a minute. Suffering affects us all. Chronic pain affects 80 million Americans. So there must be a benefit going on here. There must be a benefit. And then I took some more steps, looking at lives of people who suffered just brutality, and I ran across Dr. Viktor Frankl. And he says, if there is meaning in life at all, then there must be meaning in suffering. Suffering is an irredictable part of life, even as fate and death. Without suffering and death, human life cannot be complete. And so I look at this last line, suffering and death. He puts suffering and death together as equals. And so why can't we say that, well, life, suffering, and death are equal? And if we do that, well, why can't we say that blue sky and green grass and fresh air and life, suffering, and death, they're all equal because they're all universal. We all go through them in life. So what is the benefit? Tell me. Well, as I said, being that pain is an individual and unique experience, you have to be your own explorer. As patients and as human beings, we have to look in our own lives to realize how pain has benefited us. The true secret of happiness is the last rung on the ladder. You hear happiness a lot in commercials. Hey, come on down and be happy, you know, that sort of thing. And so... My idea, the true secret of happiness, I believe, and you're in a profession that I don't have to remind you, but you all are givers. And the basis, the foundation of what I'm talking about, it is better to give than to receive. And so what I do is I challenge my audience. Imagine this, I challenge a group of pain patients to say, hey, you know what, you need to go out and find someone that's going through something that you're going through and help them. You want me to do that? Yeah. Think of the experience. Whether you're a pain patient or a medical professional, we all have this great experience. It's called life experience that we can share with people. But the greatest gift that we can give one another is our ear, is listening. Just listening. And so, I leave you with the words of James Allen, our good old friend, who says, Taking the first step with a good thought, the second with a good word, and the third with a good deed, I entered paradise. Thank you so much. Good morning to you. Look forward to seeing you throughout the day. Thank you.